Hey guys, so welcome to another YouTube video. I am Joe, and in this video, we're going to be tackling the energy orb around the tire. If you have not watched part one of this um series, making my first ever VFX shot, I'll attach the video somewhere and you'll be able to watch this. So we're going to be creating this energy orb around the tire and blender. So let's just let's just get into it. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to be creating a new scene on this side. So we have a clean blender scene so the first thing we're going to bring in is we're going to bring in a cone and what we're going to do we're going to rotate on the x axis by 180 degrees so the other side is pointing downward so we have a face here but on the other side right here we also need a face what we can do is to select that point and click shift command b if you're on a mac or shift control b if you're on a pc and we also have the face that we have up down here so what we can do, we can just go to one view, go to edit mode and scale this on the Z-axis. Now that we have this on the Z-axis, we can just go straight into our shader editor and start working on in texture. So I'll just shade smooth this, um, see if we're an EV, we're an EV, I'll turn on ambient position and blown so we can see this effect working in real time. So we'll go to new texture and we'll just bring in a color ramp. We will also bring in a gradient texture and then with our node wrangler add-on so with that add-on we can click on our gradient texture and press ctrl t it has a mapping node and a texture coordinate node so we can connect those and then switch from generated to objects now what we're going to do with this setup right there we're going to make sure we plug this into the base color and we also plug into the emission right so our emission, we can just bring the emission up 10 for now. We can change this later, but we can obviously see that the mapping on our geometry is very, very wrong. So what we're going to do, we're going to rotate on the y-axis first. Let's take that to minus 90 because we want this dark part of, of this energy up to be transparent. So the up part is going to, going to be light, right? So we have that. But the gradient is a bit more smooth and not the sharp, right? So we're going to scale on the z-axis, scale on the z-axis a bit, just so that follow-up looks a bit smoother. And then we'll go to the location and move on the x-axis also. So we are good on this. What we're going to do next is to just connect our color to the alpha. And we should expect that this down part should be transparent. But no, it's not because we need to go to the setting and set blend mode to alpha blend and then the shadow to none. Now we have just the top part, which is going to be the emissive part and the down part is going to be transparent. Right? So we can take this emission up to, let's say 70, so we can see it more, more clearly. And then what we can do next is to apply a controller. We're going to be using a controller to animate the energy up. So we'll go to the empty. We add a plane axis and we can go back to the editor and add the objects there. So we can go and turn this on, let's say the X axis by 180 degrees so that the light part comes up and we apply that. But we see that our, our light isn't, isn't shining with what we want it. So we can just go to our color ramp and start playing with that a little bit. Okay, I think our light is coming through a bit more, but we're going to see more of it when we start animating this. What we want this to do is for it to just go up and down like this on its own. So the way we can do that is to use a noise modifier in our animation. Just switch and go to our timeline. And what we can just do is to just add one location keyframe. And what, what we do next, go to the graph editor, locate the z-axis. And then what we're going to do next is just to add a noise modifier. Now the noise modifier is just going to be generating different motion on just that axis. So once we play it, we see that now we are generating some movement in that energy orb. So what we want to do, we um let's see, let's increase the strength. So we'll have more varying movement. Let's switch off all over this so that we can see the movement properly. What we can do, we can reduce the scale. Okay, we can reduce the scale and then we can maybe reduce the strength. It seems to be going very crazy. 
Okay, I think that's good. So we can just, let's go to the shader editor and apply a color to this energy of. We're just going to go with blue for now. Since that's what we use in the final image, we'll just go with blue. And um, what I'm going to do next is just to apply so the fire modifier, just to give it a little bit of thickness. So that's good. I'm not going to turn on my overlay and pause this animation because we're going to be adding another cone just to create an inner core of the, the energy orb around the tire. So we can just shift D and then scale this down, right? So we have another energy source inside. And for this, we're going to um, be using a different material for it. And then we're going to bring in another empty. I've removed the empty from the object slot here. So I'm going to bring in another empty. Let's say, let's do, uh, let's do a sphere. Just so we can differentiate between the both. And then we can select the inner energy orb and add this. Now, this second energy orb is going to be controlling the inner core where we have this second, the other empty here that is going to be controlling the outer core. I believe there's a more efficient way to do this, but this is just the way I now to do this. So we can rotate on Y axis by 180 degrees and we have that set up. We're just going to offset this a bit and then go to the timeline. We're going to add in in location keyframe, go to the object transform, <clears throat> click on the Z location and add in a noise modifier. So the noise modifier is just going to be affecting the inner core alone. So um, we can increase the scale, maybe increase the strength also. We'll try to make sure that it doesn't clip down here. Oh, it's clipping, seriously. So we can bring that down so we can turn off the overlay. But let's bring the overlay back. I feel like the first core is going crazy. So we can just reduce, let's reduce the strength of that a bit. The next element we're going to be adding to this is, is going to be a sphere. So we can scale this up and then maybe shade smooth. Most of the work is going to be happening with the application of modifiers. So the first modifier we're going to be adding is the vertex weight modifier. So what we're going to do first is to go to our edit mode, go to vertex group and add all of these vertices in the vertex group. So we assign all those vertices and we can come up to the vertex edits and the vertex group we just created, we can insert it here, increase the default weight, we'll click on normalize weight. And in the fall off, very important, we go to custom curve and then invert this curve. Very, very important step. You guys should take note of that. And then we go back to the influence and add in a texture. In the texture, we can just um, go and just apply basic cloud texture. And for us to see this effect right now, we need to add another mask modifier, but just so that we can see what's going on, when I go to the weight paint mode, you would see that different parts of these vertices have different weights. So we can go to the next and add in a mask um, max modifier and in the vertex group, we just click the group and now we see something going on. Let us quickly switch to object mode so we can see clearly and we can just increase the threshold. What we're going to do next is to add a smooth modifier, increase the factor to where we feel like it's smooth and then add several repeats and maybe the vertices can bring this down a bit more. So just so we can have something a bit more smoother, we can add one level subdivision to this and we see what we have here then the next thing we're going to add we're going to add a simple deform modifier the twist is going to be happening to the z-axis so we can crank up the angle and we have this so what i'm going to do i'm just going to switch to the material preview and then link this material to to the second cone so we can link materials and let's see what that looks like Okay, we're going to go to our sphere and then we'll have to animate it rotating around the Z axis. So we can go on to the timeline, add a keyframe, let's do rotation alone and we'll go forward and RZ 360 degrees. So what I just typed was rotate the object on the Z axis by 360 degrees. So we can do the rotation and add another keyframe. Now, if you look at this, you see that we have that rotation between those two keyframes. 
So what I want to do is to select those two keyframes, click Shift E, and we're going to make sure that this rotation continues throughout the timeline. So we'll just click Linear Extrapolation, and when we click Play, we'll see that the animation is going on throughout timeline, right? So for this, we want it to go a little bit slower so we can separate those two frames and we'll see that our animation is going a little bit slower. I want to give this a bit more presence. So I'm going to go and tweak the vertex. Okay. So we're having something here. We can even click smooth and see what that looks like. Exactly, exactly. So this is what we want, right? And then maybe I want to add a solidify modifier to this so we can give that a little bit more thickness, right? So this is what we have for the final animation. And this is just going to continue. We don't need to um, start keyframing at every point. We're just going to add a main controller to this. So this is the main controller. And we're going to select all of it and parent that to the main controller. Now we have all the animation going on, but when I click on the main controller and turn off the overlay, you can see that we can rotate. You can we can rotate this however we want. So we can always use this as the main animation control, right? So what I'm going to do next, I'm just going to select all of this, Control C, and move back to our main scene. We can just go to the camera view here, and yeah, we can bring in our our energy up, right? so that we can set this to the scene properly. But before we do that, let's bring it out so that we can actually parent this main control to this, our parent vehicle here. So we can control P, parent active transform. So anytime the vehicle is moving, you can see that the energy orb is also moving with it, as you can see. So we can come back down and move this in place. This is good. This is good to go. And when we animate, we'll see that it takes off together with it. So what we're going to do next is just to animate this and let it come out of the tire at the time that we want it to add. No, no rotation. We're going to add a location keyframe to that main control. And then we'll copy that keyframe just to create a constant. And when we want it to come out of the tire is here. So we can turn on auto keyframe and just just to make adjustments for it to come out here. Let's see that in the camera view. Oh, we don't want it to clip in like this. So we can select that and maybe hide it in. Okay, that's good. Okay, that's good. So I'm going to do the, the exact same thing for the other part of the tire also. I believe this part might actually be fast forwarded, so I don't take too much time on this. All right, so we have those parented to, to the vehicle right now. So I'm not going to go into material preview and see what this looks like. Uh, okay. I think that's, that's cool. Um, so that's about it guys. Um, in the next show, we're going to be tackling the smoke simulation and we'll just go on from there and just close out the series. So that's it guys. So long. And until I see you in the next one, peace.